This is Self Startup. Well, 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 we meet again. Welcome back to Self Startup. This is a podcast that highlights the small business owners, the self-employed and freelancers who have taken the plunge to create their own desirable lifestyle. My name is Andy Dowling. I'm also the host of the Andy Social Podcast. I play bass in the Australian Metal Band Lord, and I'm also a dispute resolution specialist. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook by searching at Andy Dowling, or you can go over to selfstarter.com.au where you can learn more about yours truly, as well as anything and everything to do with the self-employment world. This week's episode is with Albert Skipper, also known as Skip from Skip's Skateboard Shop and Cafe, which is located in Eagle Hawk, which I believe it's a suburb just north of Bendigo, if I'm correct. Um, I just got off the phone with Skip and I thought, I'm going to record this intro straight away because I am pumped up. This is a really, really great conversation with somebody who's got so much passion and is not just selling skateboards, um, which is kind of what I thought it was initially. And I must say a big shout out to Broden who recommended uh, Skip and his business. The business has been only up and running since January of this year, being 2018. And in this time, they've done so much. And this is a really, really unique space, not unique globally. Um, as Skip mentioned, uh, similar things have happened or been built in other parts of the world, but uh, Skip has created this space. Uh, for people that love skateboarding, but also love coffee. They sell donuts as well, and they're soon expanding as well. Um, And I think by the time you guys listen to this episode, there will also be a barbershop included in this space. So it's an incredibly unique little spot. And as you'll hear in this story, Skip is so passionate about the community and giving back as much as he can. He said at one point, the community is my family. And there are so many amazing things. And I'll refine my takeaways down. I'm trying to keep it about four per episode because I, I know I waffle on, but um, there is so much stuff in this. And whether you, even if you don't think that you like skating, which me, I've got no idea about skating whatsoever, but coming out of this conversation, I like I'm borderline wanting to buy a skateboard. I'm really, really inspired by uh, Skip's passion behind what he does. And the story linking up to why he created this business is really, really interesting as well. So lots and lots of stuff here. If you want to have a sticky beak at what Skip's all about, you can go to skipskate.com or you can search for Skip's Skateboard Shop on Facebook as well. As always, everything will be in the show notes over at selfstarter.com.au. I was almost going to say Andy Social. I'm getting these podcasts, uh, you know, blended over and mixed up, but go and check out the Andy Social podcast as well. But go to selfstarter.com.au. I'll have everything in the show notes, including my takeaways. But for now, strap yourselves in. This is a really, really cool chat. I cannot talk this up enough. Please enjoy this really, really great chat with Skip from Skip Skateboard Shop. My name is Albert Skipper, aka Skip. Uh, everybody knows me as, and I am the owner of Skip's Skateboard Shop and Cafe. And uh, basically, what we run here is a a mixed business selling skateboards, coffee, and donuts, and the occasional toasty every now and then. And also introducing uh, always ever evolving. Um, bringing other sorts of things into the business as well. But uh, basically uh, changing the masses, teaching people to skate. It's pretty cool. I mean, I look, I'll, I'll be honest and put my hand up that I don't know much about the skating world, but any yep. skateboard shop that I've gone into over the years, and especially I remember like in the 90s, like there was this massive surge of like popularity with skateboarding. And, mm. um, you know, I got dragged along with some mates to skateboard shops and I had no idea what I was looking at. But I've never seen a skateboard shop that's got a cafe included in it and you're doing extra things. So is it unique? Are there other people doing it or do you um, think you've got a point of difference? Look, I do think that we have a point of difference, but it's, uh, there are cafe, uh, there are skateboard shops around the world, especially in England. There's a, uh, we sort of kind of pinched the idea of doing, um, uh, coffee and, uh, skateboards and that, uh, from, a place in the UK so and they really promote promote the whole doing the donuts thing so yeah it, essentially we do pinch the idea but there's not a lot of that uh, around here what I f- find though is with uh, with this skate shop in particular from my from I, I guess why I'm stepping back when I was a kid that skateboard shops 
uh, used to be a place where you could go and hang out. It wasn't just a place of uh, just going to buy a board. It was mm. it was a big thing back in the days. You go, especially we'd go to Melbourne, go to the skate shops, and just hang out and look at all the boards, and you know, catch up with other skaters and all those sorts of things. So that's what I really, to be honest with you, really wanted to bring back uh, to life. And, you know, uh, with all the uh, skaters that I know, the old school skaters from the 80s, that's what we, that sort of came back, jumped back at me, um, talking to other skaters about, yeah, that's what we used to do is just go and hang out at the skate shop, you know. So um, I guess I'm almost on the forefront of bringing that back again. So, yeah, that's where, that's where, I, where I'm at anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like, I just, I mean, with people that I know, and you reminisce about like years gone by and you go, oh, yeah, it's not as good as it used to be. And then most people just leave it at that. But I, I guess you take it at that next step going, well, okay, yeah, it used to be great in the past, but let's recreate it. Let's do something about it instead of just Let, going, well, that's, yeah. that's a nice memory and we'll just have to deal with what we've got now. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I, you know, I also want to push push the point of what it is is more than just. I always say, say to everyone that comes here, this is more than just a skate shop. This is about our community. So uh, you don't even have to be into skating to come here. And uh, you can come here. I have people coming here uh, just for the coffee or just to catch up with people. It's a it's a safe house where you know young kids can come to and uh, know that they're feeling feeling welcomed and and uh, you know and I can give them give them some education and skating or just uh, if they need somebody to talk to. But not just the kids; it's the adults as well. You know, so it really is. And for, for to the area that we're in, it, it was something that was actually needed, uh, pushing the community forward and, and seeing, uh, you know, that uh, there's something a little bit more modern for this for, for this area. And uh, the community, uh, I guess, have come uh, have been so supportive of what we've done here, um, uh, bringing something. And I've had like uh, mums and dads come come over and thank us for being here. And everyone, you know, we, we get a, such a wide variety of people in here. For, I mean, skaters. We get uh, parents. We get we get which is funny. We get monks in here. We get heaps of monks. So I don't know what that's about. Yeah, yeah. So we 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 get monks in here. One of our favourite customers is a monk, and um, he brings a lot of people um and i uh, you know i think um and if, if you don't mind me talking about it, i think our community here is such an underrated community mm. the spirit is strong here in, in eagle hawk um and we've got so many um i guess what we love about it the most is we love the uh untouched oh, well not untouched we've got so many things that people don't know about like our beautiful star cinema one of the most underrated gardens there's all sorts of things here there's beautiful buildings and actually people some people just outside of Eagle Hawk, like Bendigo, you know, and I love Bendigo, um, don't really know what's actually here. And it was a from day one, it was a question that was always asked of me: is why did we come here? And um, I have no regrets about being here because uh, it's, uh, you know, I just want to promote it as much as I can because uh, we feel welcome here, we feel safe, and you know, the stigma of what Eagle Hawk had is long gone. And I just say to people, go for a drive over the bridge and come and have a look. And anyone that comes over here, they go, oh, wow, I didn't know this place existed. Or, you know, so I feel that, uh, you know, we're mo- we're helping, this shop is helping Eagle Hawk uh, move forward. And uh, every day we see it growing and growing and growing. So it, we're, I think we're on the right path, you know. Oh, well, I'll have, I'll have to dig into this a bit further um, later into the conversation because I think um, there's obviously additional things behind this whole concept of why the business exists and for you there's a lot of passions there it's not just about the skating as you said there's there's all this extra stuff here so there's a lot of there's a lot of meaning behind it but do you want to what's your background like what were you doing before this before this business got up and running yeah yeah so i've been a uh, music teacher for about 25 years i think something like that Uh, a long time i think i've lost count but um basically i was a unorthodox music teacher so i guess my teaching methods were um to help people who wanted to learn about music but couldn't be bothered uh going through all because it's music is hard you know and uh people that i've just found there were people just want to pick up a guitar and play it you know or 
all those sorts of things. So I had to find different ways of teaching to teaching to play guitar or learning how to sing or any any sort of instrument really, um, and, and be a little bit different from everybody else. But I think for me, I guess it was more what I found was that uh, it was more music therapy. So I used to I basically work with. Uh, more my students uh, were the ones that nobody else would touch. Mm. I basically get the I, I got got the hard jobs, and uh, but you know I always I always had this belief of uh, music is for everybody. So I'd always uh, push that. That's the same thing as I do with skateboarding. Anybody can skateboard, but um, on the music side, so basically yeah, just uh, getting it. And music makes you feel happy. It brings you to life. You know, I, I worked with people with depression, um, young old young girls who didn't like the way they looked, um, young boys who just hated themselves. Um, I also worked in, uh, in disabilities, uh, using music to teach uh, people with physical disabilities to speak through song. Um, also uh, worked... Uh, using music with refugees to, to speak as well. Um, and it's a great way to uh, get involved with the community using music, especially if you're a refugee. Um, so there was a lot of challenges. I didn't mind the challenge. You know, like it, some things everybody always says, you know, it's going to be impossible to, to teach these people. But you, you've sort of got to be open-minded. And, and especially with music, you've got to learn to open your ears and, and really, really listen in and find – Find find that switch that sort of you know turns a little light bulb on and and it takes a lot of work but uh, yeah it, that's that's uh, what I did for a lot of years and um, I guess uh, and I ran a I, I still have I have my own sort of uh, music school called Rock Pride Music which is now just a, a rehearsal studio for local bands uh, in the centre of Bendigo. Uh, which is a, quite an established place. Um, and I basically created that business out of nothing. So when I was uh, – I decided I wanted to go into business and, and do my own thing because I find it really hard working for other people. <laughs> um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to uh, have a crack. And so basically starting that – the rock prime music i started with absolutely nothing and i was going around just to fit out a place um i was going to the tip and looking for furniture and all sorts of odd bits and pieces fixing guitars and you know anything i could use to uh fill up it to make something look like a studio and um yeah and look i always had that uh had that positive attitude of you can you can do anything you want to. You, I mean, yeah, you do need some money, but you can't start without it, you know. And that's it's about communicating with people uh, and talking with a lot of people and making people believe that you can you can achieve something, you know. And with my students, I'd always uh, push that across to them: is that you know people that have low self esteem. You know, um, I'm always saying to them, well, you know, you, we've got to get out of that. It's the power of positivity is, um, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not a, actually a religious guy or anything like that, but the power of positivity is, 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 is actually a thing and it does work. So if you think that you could do something and you may run, you know, you may stumble a few times, um, you, you will get there eventually. And I've proven that once already and, and now I'm on, on a path of where I'm going to prove prove that again, hence, hence why I've um, you know here I am now because like obviously after teaching for so long, um, it uh, I decided to move on because you do get tired because if for me as a teacher you become a little bit drained because you all my students as far as I'm concerned if you're going to be a teacher you have to give them 100 percent and when you do that it does get tiring not that there's no regrets about it but I found in myself it was getting really I was getting really tired and it was time to uh, time to move on from there well I tell you what like it, it all starts all the puzzle pieces start to fall into place so like you know understanding what the, the current business is now with you know the with the skateboard shop and mm. and some of that meaning behind it and then hearing about 
where you've come from and what you've done, you've, you've got a lot of involvement with the community and there's a, there's a care factor there that a lot of other people don't have that, that same level. And mm. having involvement with music, there's definitely parallels there with, you know, involving young people, having people use their own, uh, their own energy in a number of different ways to, to put it out there and express themselves. And so Absolutely. it comes through, through all different forms, but you know, skateboarding and, and music definitely draw parallels there. So I can understand like how some of these things fit into place, but I guess the question is, you know, obviously doing music for quite a number of years and teaching, teaching kids and going through all these different things and dealing with a lot of the sort of the, the, the two hard basket cases from, yeah, from other people yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Where was that point where you sort of thought about, you know, from a skateboarding point of view, obviously you've always yeah. been a fan of skateboarding, but where was this mm. light bulb moment where you thought about actually moving forward with creating a shop yeah. for skateboarding? Well, well, <clears throat> I, I'll probably uh, jump back a little bit before the shop here, but um, I guess, you know, at that, that point, uh, how I got here was that um, because of all this time that I put into being uh, a, a a teacher and helping people with, with depression and and all of those things that I've actually found myself falling into that my own depression mm. um, because as I was saying when you become a, a teacher and you give a hundred percent then you become you, you become a sponge and you so you take in you soak up so many of the the problems of, of all these people and it gets it gets stuck in you so i actually got to a point in my life where i'm going oh wow you know i'm, I'm so drained and i'm actually unhappy with myself you know and um and i realized it was time to move on and so um it was at a time where i actually had for myself no social social outlet and um because i hadn't skated for many years and uh, but it was something that was always sitting in the in the back of my mind that I was very passionate about back in the 80s. And then I actually got called by a friend uh, that I used to skate with back in the 80s, and it was quite funny. He was he's a lot younger than me, and he used to follow me around as a as a skateboarder, you know, and would, would learn things from me, and I'd learn things from him, whatever. And um, so what had happened is that he goes, hey, you should come and have a skate with me. And I went, are you for real, man? <laughs> and I, I said, he go, you know, I said, you're in your 40s. And uh, he goes, yeah, I've, I've never stopped skating. I went, oh, you're kidding me. And he goes, and he said, I'll give you a board and you can try it out. And I went, okay. <laughs> I got this. I uh, got on this board, you know, and instantly it just, I fell in love. It just, it came back to me just like that, you know, but at the same time, you know, I was totally, totally embarrassed, you know, this 40 plus guy, you know, on a skateboard, going to a skate park, you know, and all these other little kids, hang, you know, watching me on oh, what's this old man doing, you know? It, it, it was, it, but I actually needed, I needed that embarrassment in my life to actually wake me up, I guess. Um, it was funny, you know, and parents even staring at me going like, oh, like I was some sort of pedophile or something, you know, hanging around the, <laughs> the, the skate park. But you know what? It's sort of, once I realised that it was something that I actually liked, I persisted and I kept doing it and I hurt myself so many times, but... You know, it was just that thing. And then I realized, I said, what does it matter? I feel alive. You know, I just feel amazing. And it was like, okay. And I noticed my balance was getting better. I was getting fitter, um, doing tricks that I probably, you know, I probably skate better now than when I was a kid. I'm not actually sure. Um, and then, but then I thought, well, am I the, am I the only one that's doing this? You know, is this is this what's going on? But then I realised I, I wasn't. This this thing of old guys at skate is huge. It's just just massive. Um, and been, so before you knew it, I, I, I met a lot of other guys that were into the same thing that had the same social, uh, had the same thing, uh, common bond in, in the 80s. And then um, it just grew and grew and grew. I mean, we could step back to the story later if you want. But, um, and then I realised that, wow, I've got people I could talk to, you know, um, 
um, people, and it wasn't just about skating. I needed people to talk to myself, you know. So, and then my network of these old guys became not just here in in Bendigo. It started to start to grow outside of out of Bendigo, and it was in Victoria. And then all of a sudden, I realised this thing's Australia wide. And then all of a sudden, I realised this thing's like worldwide. There is literally millions and millions and millions of people in their in their senior years or in their in their forty plus and upwards um, that are so into their skateboarding or rediscovering skateboarding and I just went, Hello, this is this is my new life. But uh, how I got to the shop and we can talk a bit more about you know, the senior skating side of things. We got here because I realised that we actually needed, we needed uh, a skate shop here in Bendigo, mm. one that was dedicated to, um, dedicated to skateboarding because we didn't really have anything here. There's been skateboard shops in the past, um, but they are uh, obviously it's sad because, you know, those, those were skateboard shops that I used to go to as well. Um, but, I thought, you know, at the time, after I was fully sort of getting into skateboarding, I really looked at what was going on. Uh, there were so many positives of skateboarding. I was sitting in, uh, in in a cafe and I was just watching so many young skaters going past and skating around, around the town. I went, there is a lot of skaters here and there is no skateboard shop. What are we doing about this? Um, and I just went, you know what? And I talked... And I'm, I guess I'm one of these guys that sort of like if I say I'm gonna if I come up with an idea if it just pops in my head I generally sort of just randomly spur of the moment I just go and do it. <laughs> um, so I thought to myself I'm gonna open up a skateboard shop and here we are <laughs> and and uh, <clears throat> I think it was a year and a year and a half later it took us to create, create this idea. Um, it makes sense though. I mean, like everything that you're explaining and, and I said before, like the, the pieces sort of fall into place and absolutely you know, for you to have that moment where you got back on that board again and sort of, you know, broke a lot of the fears and the, and the storylines that had been created in your head that weren't necessarily true. And mm. it gave you this release where you just, I mean, I'm, and I'm, I'm piecing it together myself here, but you know, that, that sort of impact that, you have seen with other people through you teaching music, you mm. can feel how skating impacted you and got you out of a bit of a rut. Oh and, yeah. And then you could see yeah. what potentially this could do for other people and then be able to obviously have a, have a shop and then have this community, this space that Absolutely. Uh, people can come into, then you're, you're ticking all these boxes. So it's obviously mm. a passion for the skating itself, but there's so much more mm. to it. I, I look like like the music. I wanted to uh, create. I wanted to show people, you know, the joy. I'm always, you know, it's a, a sharing's caring type of thing. But I want to show what music music brings such joy and and brings people to life. And then with the same thing, I want with the skateboarding. I wanted to show the people, uh, the public, what it's done for me, and 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 it could do the same for you. And for me, skateboarding is, is is my church. It's my religion. Mm. You know, it's it's what I really believe in it. Because I, I would, I'm not going to lie, if if this hadn't have come into my life, and this is probably going to get a bit dark right now, mm. if this this hadn't have come into my life, I'd probably I'd probably be six foot under. Mm. You know, mm. and I, and it scares me to even think about that. But that's. That's uh, that was a stage in my life where I was so in a dark place, and and this place, this this thing came along, and saved me, man. Like it is my religion, and I really believe, and I see it every day. There are so many people that come into this store, and you know that either haven't skated or want to rediscover skating, skateboarding, and. So I'll get them sorted out, you know, and I'll speak to them about what it's like, and then. You know, I see the look in people's eyes when they first learn to skate and I see what it does for them and they're every day. And it's not about being – I always say to people, you know, when it comes to skateboarding because uh, skateboarding is forever evolving in the tricks, okay? It's getting b bigger and stronger. Pe people are pushing themselves of what they could do on a piece of wood with four wheels on it, you know? Um, um, but I always say to people, it's, it's not about the trick. 
it, it, it's what about it's about what it does how it makes you feel yeah. so if it makes you feel alive then i'm all down for that you know like yeah, i don't care if you you know get on the board and go from a to b and it's like uh, at the distance of a meter you know or yeah. two meters i'm gonna stand there and watch you get on that board and go over it and i'll go yeah that was rad man and they'll go oh I just skateboarded, yeah, and that's cool. And so and then you start to sort of test yourself and just keep pushing yourself a little bit at a time, and all of a sudden you start to pick up little things, you know, and people always tell me, you know, show me videos of the new trick they learnt and all of those sorts of things and, you know, the places they've been. And that's, you know, for me, that was, a, you know, I've got to travel around now. I loved when skateboarding came into my life, I loved getting into my car and going for a drive and discovering, you know, n uh, new parks, but not just the park, a town I've never even heard of, you know, <laughs> like, a, you know, and I just, it was just random driving. That's what I was doing. And that's where all this sort of passion really did come from. And, it, and I'd turn up to a park and I'd see some old guy or even young guys and I'd just literally walk up, go, hey man, my name is Skip, you know, um, can I skate with you? And they, yeah, and everyone go, yeah, man, get into it. You know, and the, and the young guys, the young guys always like, oh, man, you are so old, but you're so cool. Like, I can't believe you, you know. Like, and I'm going, you know, and for me, that inspires me because our skating community is it, it's such a great culture that you can walk up to any skater and say, hey, I want to learn how to skate. I'm not going, sure, let's do this. You know, and it doesn't matter your age, your gender, your colour, whatever it is. And that's the beauty about it. There is so much going on. It just, it's such a, it brings people together, you know. Oh, what I found here in, in, in our shop, it's also built a bridge between young and old. And I mean old, like I'm talking senior, senior. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, when we first opened uh, on our opening day, what I loved was seeing, uh, like, uh, we've got a, a like a workbench where young guys can uh, build their own skateboards. And so we had a group of young guys building their own skateboards. And we had a group of senior people sitting at some tables drinking coffee and having a chat. And you could see that there was this this uh, interest uh, of the, uh, the senior people looking at what these young people are doing. And um, so... I said, go and, go and speak to these young people. Go and, go and see what's going on. You know, so they come over and I said to the young people, talk to the old people. You know, show them what you're doing. So here they are, you know, explaining. And they're going, oh, you know, what are those things? And the young people go, oh, they're trucks. And, and this is, you know, and these are the wheels and this is the bearings and all the bits and parts, all the bits and pieces that go on a board and how it all works. And they're going, oh, you know, you could see there was a, there was an interest there. But it wasn't just about that. It was more about that, the communication between young and old. Because sometimes skateboarders get perceived as, you know, bad people and, you know, we're nothing but hooligans and, but it's not necessarily the case, you know. So when when they saw that, then I could see that this is this is like as I said, this is more than just a shop. This is something where we can bridge the gap between everybody. If there was, is I don't I don't let hate in my shop, you know. If the, if you've got if you've got hate in your shop, if you've got hate, I don't want you in here. But if you can come in here and respect others, that's fine. So that's how that's that's how I run, you know. Oh, so there's man. nothing nothing but love. It's like it's like your friend who hit you up and said, "Do you want to go for a skate?" It, mm. That moment, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. Like it's just it's it been is. this this snowball effect that's happened afterwards, and so many Absol amazing things that have happened just absolutely. from that decision absolutely. that you made absolutely. off that question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you right now, as we're sitting here and speaking, I've got a young fella because I've got a mini ramp in my in my shop as well. I've got a young fella skating away here. He's probably the age of, oh, I reckon he'd be about eight. Yep. And I'm looking at the gentleman right in front of me. I reckon he's well into his late 80s. Yep. <laughs> and he's just watching and he's talking and everybody's smiling, you know. And for me, that's that's the most passionate thing, you know. Even though the skateboarding is noisy, nobody cares. You know, we're just here. It's a place where nobody's judged and you're, you're accepted for whatever it is that you do. So as long as we're all polite to each other, I think it's, um, I think the world's a better place. Absolutely. Um, so the business was 
launched in January, I think, on Australia we, Day? We, uh, we, we, yeah, so we, we launched Australia Day, um, and I guess how the actual business started. So essentially what we have is uh, two businesses in one. So basically what we've got is I have a, uh, a business partner, uh, Mick, and now basically Mick runs the copy side of things. Mm-hmm. And um, what had happened is when I came up with the idea, uh, I want to start a skate shop, really hard work in that respect, as in um, because any anyone can ring up. You know, obviously, I need you know I need supplies. I need mm. to be able to sell something. I, it took me about a year and or just over a year or a year and a half, roughly, um, to convince. I basically got on the phone and I was kissing backsides for a year and a half. <laughs> so just talking, talking to all these all these distributors, and any kid could ring or anyone could ring up a, 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 a skate supplier and say, "Hey, I'm going to open up a skate shop." Doesn't necessarily work like that. You've got to convince people. That this is you 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 know you're genuine and you're dead set serious mm. and you're passionate about about what you do. So when you do that, so that was that took a year and a bit to do that. Finally, I started getting somebody on board. Okay, now in that time, I was looking around for um, um, a place to put this, you know, this shop that you know I was creating something that wasn't you know i had no i didn't even have anywhere to put this thing yeah so um essentially uh what i was going to do is put it uh set up a very small tiny shop inside my inside of uh my studio in town with rock ride music and then i sort of realized now nah, this is not right looked around and bendigo um uh, got off at a uh uh basically almost a shed um, in Bendigo, and I, oh, I wasn't really confident about that. And then the way, and, and I don't know, it's sad. It's probably a, it's a, it's a sour point on everybody's uh, mind at the moment is the uh, the retail spaces and the Hargraves Mall in Bendigo. We all know that it's not running that well, and they're trying to revamp it. There was just nothing there that was inviting for me mm. um, in, in Bendigo itself, and. You know, I don't know what they're going to do to uh, fix that. I think they've got a long road. Uh, council's got a long road ahead of them. Um, so, but then um, uh, this coffee shop that I was, coffee business that I, I was going to, I'm going to give a plug, coffee business in Hargrove Street, um, where because I'm, I'm very passionate about my coffee, I must say about that as well. <laughs> that's 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 my other religion. <laughs> <laughs> I probably drink way too much, but um, so for me, it was just like I love my coffee, and I was going to this coffee shop, and uh, when I when I walked into this coffee shop, it was quite funny. Um, I walked in, and there was uh, metal music playing in the background, and I went, "Oh, hello!" <laughs> in, in, in a coffee shop. And uh, but what won me over is that I looked around in that coffee shop, and there was it was full of people sitting at the tables drinking the coffee, didn't care about music. Old me was went, oh that coffee's good, that's real good. So I'm drinking a coffee and I no Mick, and um, we just had this bond. We just bonded straight away. And uh, just we had about music and like and mix a snowboarder and all those sorts of things. And I started telling him about, you know, he started to get to know me and he, he knew that I was trying to um, uh, open up a skate shop. And then um, I, I don't know where the light bulb moment was, but we sort of said, you know what? We both have some common passions here. Let's do something together. And I went, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then we realised that um, not even, it sort of came to us and went, hang on, let's try to find a place. Let's look in our own backyard. And there we were. We looked at our own backyard and we found, we found this place. And we went, yep, yeah, this is where we need to be. And we knew that this, we were going to get the support for, uh, from the community. And that's, that's how we ended up here. And it just, we just came in and we knuckled down, just the two of us, 
and um, just uh, renovated this beautiful, tiny little shop. And now it's just an it's it's an amazing place where people just come in and uh, you know they look around and go can't believe this is here and there's so much so much to see in here you know um, all sorts of odd bits and pieces artwork and yeah yeah that's pretty much how how the shop started. In I mean in the last several months of the of the business being up and running I mean it's become a reality you know this this concept this idea and then trying mm. to find somebody then this chance happening where you, you mm. both come together and and worked out this idea and now it's now it's a real thing and it's been been pumping and moving what's it's, I mean what's the first few months been like oh uh, look um, incredible like we haven't actually seen uh what this part of the year is going to do yet mm. You know, like, um, so it's we're still in our early stages. We're only six months of trading. And, you know, when we haven't actually figured out the formula yet. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, for me personally, I've figured out uh, what board is selling, you know, what brands and all those sorts of things. Um, but I think you, you've got to look at everything, you know. There, there's so many things you've got to do in a business. So, yeah, you've got to be – because with skateboarding, you, you've got to look at what's – it can be, a, it can be a, a trend thing, as in who are the latest skaters out and who, what, what uh, you know, what are the young guys, who are they watching, whose videos are they watching. Yeah. You know, so that's – in that. so if you stay on top of that, that's going to help you a lot as well. Um, look, I, I feel that, like – and, yeah, when I think it's going to be quiet, all of a sudden, bang, I'm just getting <laughs> smashed. We just, we just don't know. Weekends are just killing it. We we absolutely love that. That's obviously when when uh, you know everyone can get get out and shop. I mean, like yeah, we're we sort of we're waiting for the you know get a bit more daylight, you know, with daylight savings mm. and all that sort of stuff, so we can open up do do when we do plan on doing uh, later trading hours. Um, but you know, we we trial running everything all the time. We've just started doing online shopping. Um, which is definitely, definitely a, a key thing that you must have, in, in, especially in retail, as far as I'm concerned. And you know, those are things that I, I am, uh, I am learning from other people ringing me up and you know asking, can I buy online or whatever. There are all sorts of different ways of uh, getting products from us. Um, and I think, you know, also look, the power of social media is unbelievable. Mm. And I've been, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I like to say I'm a social media whore, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that thing all the time because I do believe what I can do, and I did, the, I, I did the same thing um, with with uh, Rock Ride Music. I was basically on there posting videos as much as I can of every single thing that I am doing. When you let people know what you're doing, it starts to people start to, especially with other stores. What I that's now that we're talking about it, what I've noticed that other stores are following what I'm doing and following the trend. So if I'm selling a board or whatever, I'll put every detail about what that board is. And you can get it from some notice, especially with Instagram, a lot of the other stores that are around, not uh, around Australia. And even, you know, I've got people in New York and, and California, everywhere, just following me and doing the same thing now. They're all putting down the specific details. And what I do is that I post, you know, a photo of – it's smart advertising as far as I'm concerned. Post a photo of the customer with their product. And I get in there and I – you know, they always say you gotta you got to have the face behind the business. I do the same thing. So I'm, they make, I make sure that I'm in on that photo with them. And I'm that guy, so you can recognise. Oh, so you're Skip, you know. And now everyone knows who I am. So you've got to be really smart and utilise that as much as you can. Um, also, doing you know things like workshops, introducing people into skateboarding. We run competitions in a tiny little shop here, you know. Like we've had, we do skate comps in here. And, you know, and it's not about – they're not pro skate comps. What this is about getting, uh, once again, community involved, you don't have to be a pro to skate. So we'll get in here and we've got absolute beginners on the ramp and right up to guys that are really rad, you know. And But it doesn't matter. You just the, – the culture, we just all mix with each other and support each other. So there's all those sorts of things, posting those videos, showing people the activity that's going on. And people go, wow, this is where we need to be. 
you know. And so now I'm I'm at a point where you remember I was saying it took me a year and a half to chase and distributors to get supplies. Well, now I'm at a point where distributors are chasing me, you know, like, they're, yeah, you know, and I worked really, really hard for that, you know, so, you know, I just didn't have a lot of money on me at the time, you know, and I still, I'm not going to say, I still don't have a lot of money, but I'm paying my bills and I'm putting food on the table, and as far as I'm, cause that's all I care about, so I'm still keeping the skateboarding side of things a passion. And I'm really excited about what the rest of the year is going to bring because I want to see because I haven't seen what the demographics going to be like. We've got so many good things coming up, and look, I'm actually a supporter of it. Is that the the 2020 Olympics, the skateboarding is going to be an official thing? So that's that's for me that's a positive, and I think that's going to reflect back on me really good. And I'll be just you know, people are going to parents are going to go, whoa, skateboarding's a thing. And it always has been, but to that level, mm. I see people going, I think I need to get my children into skateboarding or, you know, I want to get into skateboarding, you know. So I think that I'm on the right path in that and I'm really interested in two years, in, in 2020, I'm really interested to see where it's going to go to from, from there. So, oh, yeah, man. man like, like you, yeah. you are on the right track for sure. Like every everything you say, I'm like, Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, absolutely, great idea. Because I mean, there's, yeah. you're you're extending on the concept of just the basic con. Well, the basic thing of just selling skateboards and and parts and accessories. Like yeah. you're you're creating or uh, you're encouraging the culture that's around it and the positivity around it. Like going back to what you were saying before about the p- power of positivity that comes mm. out in everything that you do. And there's all these roll on effects that probably most people don't even understand the connections. So you're there to Absolutely. sort of demonstrate it, paint a picture and show people and lead them in a direction that there is a lot of roll on effects from people oh, enjoying skateboarding. Ab- and it's just, this, this, the, there's yeah. so much potential there. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, look, I'll probably go into it. I'll, I'm more than happy to tell you guys it's sort of a secret, but I think I'm, I'm just going to start. And I actually started promoting this actually last night on social media. It was a secret, but that roll on effect that you're talking about. So, what we, uh, like I said to you, the, the people that come through, you never know who's going to walk through the door. Absolutely. Okay, that's 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 the beauty about. It. So we've had um, uh, a young a young couple that uh, moved to, uh, or oh, basically were travelling through, and from a, a sunny part of the world, and I started uh, talking to them about our area, uh, and they were just travelling around. And I started talking about our area and uh, Eagle Hawk and how much we love this. And turns out uh, they're skaters, right? So, and quite good skaters. And um, so uh, we got, and we've really started to bond. And then um, I noticed, as I said, the power of social media is an amazing thing. I noticed there was a, 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 a rad skate shop in Adelaide. And um, I looked at this and um, I went, hey, that's really cool. And then I started talking, like, stepping back to these people that I met. Well, and it's f- funny because I, I talked it up so much about this. They ended up moving here. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> they just went, man, and they came and said, Skip, we loved how much you talked about this uh, Eagle Hawk and Bendigo. Um, we're moving here. And they did. And that was in a matter of weeks. I could not believe it. And they wow. shipped all their furniture and all that sort of stuff and just settled in the video. They, they love it here. And then something came up and I saw this thing um, on on um, on social media. And straight away I, I sent them a message. I said, hey, uh, uh, maybe uh, you should come and uh, do something in my shop with me. And... Um, so I just want to put it out there. Welcome to uh, uh, oh, how can I say this? Um, welcome to Boneless Barbers. <laughs> Skip Skateboard Shop is now going to be operating a barber shop as well. Oh wow! How's how yeah. good's that? Yeah, man. So if you want to get a nice cutthroat, come and <laughs> come and see the Skip Skateboard Shop Cafe. <laughs> I, so I love it. well, there you go. You're extending on that concept, aren't you? Bringing yeah, in different yeah, it things. all it, it all intertwines. So um, you know, it's it's it just keeps rolling on. And like with the barbershop, it's such a cool thing they do. And he's a skater. He's a skater. 
Um, he's a barber, and I just went, yeah, we are so doing this. So in the next few weeks, we're going to be adding on to adding on to the shop. And, um, yeah, it just keeps growing. And what my family is growing, that's what we're starting to see here. You know, the community the community is, is my family, and that's what I, I'm loving about it. It's that, um, once again, we get that support from here. So when I think that it's, uh, I guess going back to retail, when I think it's it's a little bit quiet, it's so unexpected. I don't know when, when you know, I'm going to make my next sale, but all of a sudden I think, oh, I'm just about to close the door. And it's like people knocking on the door and going, hey, man, can you let me in? I'm just, <laughs> sure. You, you, don't, you don't know. And look, I'm not going to lie, retail is a hard business. Whatever retail business mm. you're in, it's hard. And people always say to me, oh, man, you're living the dream being in a skate shop and all that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's cool that what I do, but you still have to do the hard yards. Mm. You know, you really do have to knuckle down and really – and. You know, even being on social media is hard work. Is, You've got to yeah. get out there and make sure that you promote it properly, you know, and whatever videos, you know, utilize all the things that you can to make to make your business grow, you know, and right down to, you know, editing movies and all that sort of thing. Don't just put a movie up, edit it and make it look cool. And anyone can do that. Like I know nothing about editing movies, but in today's technology, um, I do it all myself and I, and I try and be as creative as possible, you know, be open-minded and think outside the square. And, yeah, you can do amazing things. I get people, you know, uh, putting up messages about all the movies that I put up on social media with the shop, laughing and carrying on going, how, how did you do that? And I have other shops, you know, um, contacting me going, how, how, how did you make do, do those sorts of things, you know? And I tell them about, like, apps that you can get. So source all of that stuff that's available and you'll and you'll do incredible things. What what an exciting time to to be up and running as a business. You know, only being a few months in, and as you said, you're like you're just trial running everything, just seeing what mm. sticks, what doesn't. You're mm. already expanding in certain areas and adding things on and working out what works and what doesn't. I mean, mm. it's just so exciting. And like even just, I mean, <laughs> I didn't think this when I was going to call you, but now I'm thinking about. Oh geez, do I need to go and buy a skateboard? Like I'm really like your, your passion is so infectious, and obviously yeah. that helps you with your business because it keeps you going it, even when it's challenging it, because it means it, so much to you. Absolutely, and you know what? He, uh, what I'm really right into right now at this point, and I'm pushing it on everybody is women skating. Yeah. Such a big thing, such a big thing. I had, I mean, women have always skated. But it has grown and grown and it's getting stronger and stronger. Just like with the guys, women need a social outlet as well, you know. Definitely. Not everyone not everyone wants to do knitting or, you know, go to coffee clubs or whatever it may be, you know. They will need a social outlet. They need something a little bit – they want to do something a little bit crazy. Mm. And so what I've been doing is every woman, you know, from, from – in their twenties, upwards, right up to their sixties, you know, um, they can do this. They can actually get on this and come to life. And so, and I've I've already helped quite a few women, you know, in, in skateboarding already. And they're starting to learn. They're teaching other other women how to skate. So they've got their own groups that are going on, you know. So well, I can't because I'm in a senior skate group here in Bendigo as well, called Bendigo Old School Skaters or Boss. Hmm. So. Um, so these women are getting together and, you know, meeting up to the park, having a bit of a giggle, watching each other fall off and all that sort of thing, you know, and, but helping each other at the same time to learn. So, And that is just a, a phenomenon as far as I'm concerned. It's all over the world, you know. Um, you've got to look at this great things happening in Tasmania at the moment with a, with a group called uh, She Shreds. Um, and that's just a guy over there who was just uh, getting, you know, um, uh, kids, uh, young girls into their own little group, um, which is starting to get parents involved. And it's gone from just a, you know, a handful of kids to hundreds of kids learning, or hundreds of girls, I should say, learning how to skate. And it's strictly for girls. 
It's and so I cool. think that's that is so cool, and that's what I want to bring here. You know, is let everybody know that it is for for anyone. You know, I'll tell anyone that has the walk through the door is like, and me, Mick and I straight up when when anybody walks in the door, that like they'll walk in and go, oh, what is this place? Go, <laughs> so you want to learn how to skate? You know, straight up, straight up, just get into it, and you know, and so the majority I have convinced. But the people that don't skate, they look, they're they enjoying just in watching it and asking the questions. Oh, what's that they're doing, you know? And all those sorts of, what sort of, you know, what do you call that trick? Or what's that bit, uh, those bits and pieces on the skateboard? So once again, it's about getting, you know, it's it, it's that community involvement and, and just, just changing the masses, you know? That's why I really want to, I love, you know, I love actually... And for me, you know, I love convincing uh, kids who ride scooters how to ride skateboards, you know, because it's just, and, you know, uh, skateboarding is bloody hard if you really want to get into it. But, you know, I've already started seeing the change in that. It's like getting, converting scooters to skateboarders, you know. So there's there's all those all those sorts of things. I've seen some of the roughest diamonds come in here that would never touch a skateboard in their life. Yeah, you know, I've also had guys in their 80s and 90s walk in there with their old boards that have got they've had sitting in their sheds and these old timber things that were it was just a you know a bit of old timber with old roller skates wheels on them <laughs> that they built when they were kids that they you know I'm bringing back bringing back these memories that they yeah. had of when they they skated you know and so you know a lot of these guys that have these old boards I'll bring them in the shop and I'll put them on display for them I'll hang them on the walls you know. Just because it's a, it's a cool thing for, to to know that skateboarding has been around for a long, long time, you know, and it's never been stronger and it's getting stronger. We've got we've got uh, we have uh, access uh, disability services next to us. Uh, they're our neighbours. So what I do is I give them old boards for their disability students to um, do artwork on, and I hang them up here in the shop, you know, and that's cool. And I get them to do a little story of who they are. You know, and it's beautiful artwork. You know, we got guys. We got guys that come in here. I've got one guy, and I won't say his name. He's bought over twenty something boards. Doesn't even skate. What's that about? <laughs> you know, like it's just, just the most bizarre thing. But he just likes the look of them. So he's just been hanging them up on his wall. You know, so there's all those sort of things that it's just been. We've ex- met so many in the short time that we've been here. We've met so many beautiful people, and they're all they're all beautiful. You know, they're all just everyone's unique that comes in here. And then with all that's going on with the skateboarding and the heavy metal music. I mean, it's not heavy metal all the time, but. You know, all that sort of things and people wanting to know about the history of skateboarding and, you know, the the different shapes of boards and the sizes of boards. I love showing that to people and I love showing, you know, how, how, you know, I love showing the people the right board for them, you know, because it's not just, you just can't just get on any skateboard. You know, you got to get all that, you got to get the right shoes and all that sort of stuff. So it's, 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 it's such a great education for people and making them feel good about themselves. So, yeah. Man, that's... you are not short of an idea, hey? Like there is no. so much going on and it's, it's, it's really like motivating to hear it because it's just, there's like, there's no, there's no limits to, to what can be done. And you're That's blending exactly right. so many worlds together. You're include, I mean, the big thing that you're doing, and you said this right from the, right from the start of our conversation, it's all about community and you're bringing in every aspect of the community to embrace this concept, which you know, stereotypically would be very segregated and people would not gravitate Absolutely. towards. So you're breaking all these stereotypes and doing amazing work. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a bunch of links in the uh, show notes for this episode when it goes up, and people can check yep. it out. And if they're, I tell you what, I think I've never been at Eagle Hawk before, but now I'm and even, even I've been sold the concept. I think I might have to drop by next time I'm in the Bendigo area. Absolutely, and, man. Stop um, in and come and see me anytime. I might have to get a skateboard sometime because now I'm thinking, <laughs> oh man, I love this idea. This sounds like so much fun. So yeah, it's yeah, really, man. Really yeah, cool, yeah. Man. And look, I, look, the thing is, I've, I've always pushed in safety as well, too, yeah. like the, the realistic, realistically. So, you know, even with the kids, it's cool to wear a helmet as far as I'm concerned. Put a helmet on. Look after your scone. You know, I've actually, in the time that I've been back skating, I've broken some serious stuff in my body. You know, but that's me coming to life and pushing my pushing my body to the absolute limits of where I can't go any anymore. 
Um, so that's why where I'm at with that, you know. But but put your safety gear on, and um, yeah, everything will be fine, man. Absolutely, that sounds good, man. Well, thank you so much. Um, Too I've, easy, brother. I've certainly got a bunch of things to think about. I'm inspired and pumped up now, so I'm going to get some stuff <laughs> stuff done. So thank you so much. And, no worries, um, Andy. Yeah, appreciate it. And all the best for the rest of the year. Too easy, brother. We'll be seeing you soon. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that chat with Albert Skipper, a.k.a. Skip. What a cool guy. Um, I am definitely going to check out this skateboard shop next time I'm in that part of the world. Um, Really, really cool story. And what an energetic guy with so many ideas. And I'm sitting there writing notes as he's talking, going, oh, that too, that too. Oh, yeah, that too. So, yeah, really, really cool chat. And I hope you guys got as much out of that as I did, as always. All those links and everything about uh, the shop and everything we discussed will be in the show notes over at selfstarter.com.au. You can go to skip, skip, I'll spill it out, skipskate.com, or you can search for Skip Skateboard Shop on Facebook as well. Now, here are my key takeaways from this chat with Skip from Skip Skateboard Shop. Number one, contributing to the community. Now, this is a common theme throughout the Self Starter podcast series. And this goes next level though for Skip. Skip has totally embraced the community. He has said before, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, the community is his family. And not only has he identified that the community needed a shop like this, but with the shop being up and running now in the way that it's set up, he is attracting people from all different walks of life, different age brackets, different interests, and he's breaking down the stigmas of separation of you know, age, um, interests, um, skateboarding specifically, and creating so much positivity and value for the community. And really, to be honest, once you get the buy-in from the wider community from all sides, and the community can understand the value that you are giving to everybody, then your longevity is there. You're fine. And you can work off that and you can feed off that and continue to give and give and give. So for you out there that's having your business or your thing that you're launching, how can you give to the community? What can you provide to your local area? Now, it might not be your physical local area. It could also be your online community. What can you do to give value so people are bought in on your concept and are going to stay there and give you the longevity that you deserve? Number two, the power of positivity. Now, Skip mentioned it sounded a little bit uh, religious, but it is so true. The power of positivity is huge. And listening to Skip's story of working in music and teaching uh, kids how to play instruments and dealing with a lot of the children that were the too hard basket for other music teachers, um, he really sort of got in there and has had a big impact on other people. And part of not only just teaching people how to uh, play music and also now as skateboarding is the mindset behind it and how to look at things and breaking through those fears and that self-talk that often holds us back from doing amazing things. So the power of positivity sounds very cheesy, but there's something to it. And I'll put some links for you guys to check out some more stuff around that because it is very underrated and often neglected. So well done to Skip. Number three, speaking of power, providing the power of skateboarding. Now we can all stereotype. Um, And our stereotypes come from our environment, what we've been exposed to, what we think we know, which is often not the reality. And Skip, through his own story and his own personal experiences, has made considerable efforts in breaking through a lot of stereotypes, which would no doubt be in his local community and elsewhere as well about what skateboarding is and the types of people that uh, do skateboard. And this is an amazing thing. And it shows that there's everything that we do is multidimensional. And there's so many things that we can get out of a product or a service or something that we feel passionately about. So is there something that you're doing that other people may not understand, but if you just tweak this slightly and look at it from a slightly different angle, do you think that maybe you could convince somebody of the positive aspects of what you feel passionate about? Number four, trial run everything. What an exciting time to be in business. So Albert's shop has only been up and running for several months. And as he said, it's too early to tell. Like he hasn't got the data there. He hasn't got the trends yet. He hasn't gone through all the seasons to see where the peaks and the troughs are and how to adjust. So at the moment, he's just throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks and what doesn't. And that's such a liberating time and a very exciting time. And I think people need to embrace that in such a positive way instead of this daunting, scary moment in business. So, you know, Skip is going through this, uh, 
period of time where he's doing extra hours, late hours, what sells, what doesn't. He's experimenting with different things such as competition social media interaction he's involving different parts of the community he's trying so many different things and as you heard he's filled with ideas and it's so exciting to hear him talk about it all and i think this is a very exciting period for a lot of people in business if they are in those first few months of operation so what can you do to really push yourself in those first few months or hell even if you've been up and running for a while what can you do just to I don't know, get a bit reckless and throw a few things out there and see what sticks and what doesn't because you know what, you can always recover. And that's it folks, those were my key takeaways from this chat with Skip from Skip's Skateboard Shop in Eagle Hawk, Victoria. Thank you so much, Skip, really appreciate it. Incredibly inspired and pumped up after talking to you and looking forward to seeing where the business goes in the future. Folks, as always, if I miss something in this episode, please let me know, drop a note in the show notes over at selfstarter.com.au if you got something different out of this episode. And as always, you can message me through all the different social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter by searching at Andy Dowling. I'm on a bunch of other platforms as well. So I think if you just search for that, you'll be you'll be able to track me down one way or the other. Um, as always, guys, thank you so much. We've got another episode in the bag. Fantastic story, as you just heard. And I'm really looking forward to giving you more and more great stories, great bits of information, and more inspiration in the coming months. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. Please continue to pass this podcast around to other people that need that little bit of a spark, that that little nudge on their self-employment journey. And hopefully I can continue to help you guys get inspired along the way. So until next fortnight, take care, guys. Keep moving forward. Keep chipping away at those goals. And we'll speak really, really soon. ta, -ta. Larry.